lets children starve to death. That's what you do. Uh, actually, uh, I, want, I want thousands of children starving to death. Do you know about, uh, here's another, do you know about harlequin babies? That is a condition, very rare, but it's a condition where the skin does not, that the skin grows extremely quickly. It's a very horrible disease where the children effectively have you think are he does covered that? in lesions. You think he does that to the children? Painful lesions. Well, he created the disease, didn't he? No, he didn't. Sin did. And that sin was a consequence. But the sin was a consequence of his creation. Sin has consequence, meaning that um, the consequences of God's creations. Here, no. this is what this is what caused the sin. So in the so beginning, okay. He made choice. In the beginning, that was it. in the beginning, there was nothing but God, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means that okay. Now, what cre what creates sin? Is it it's Lucifer or is it Satan? No, it's our free will. He has a choice. He God created. creates free will, though. He wasn't yeah, a robot. exactly. He, he created free will. Means but that's just something that you make choose, and you, you create that yourself. But he still he still gave us the free will. Yes. Would you rather be robots? I, I would rather have free so will. But what you're saying is that because my species has is a normal species and does occasion and occasionally does bad things and occasionally does good things mm -hmm. depending on your on your view because there's no universal good or evil yes, that's true. that it's our fault that these that harlequin babies exist and honestly you really need to just look this up because it is such yeah. a horrible horrible painful thing yes. where the children usually die before their teens because of horrible painful lesions yes. i have a very hard time seeing that as not a vengeful God, which, by the way, he does say that he is a vengeful God in a number of places. Yeah, that's true. But how can he be all-loving and vengeful at the same time? He's all-loving, but he defends his But if he's all-loving, that means there, he has no vengeance, no no hatred at all. He has no hatred, he has vengeance. For the sin, not, not for, for the, the sinner. For the reason why those words are separated. For, for the sin, not for the sinner. He, the, sin is the complete opposite of, how do you say, if we didn't have God's law, because you know, you know, America was based on. No, it wasn't. Don't uh, even try that. Okay. Don't even pull that. Treaty of Tripoli. The United States is in no way founded as a Christian nation. That was signed. Well, not founded, but with the baseball principles. You know what I mean? Um, if you're saying, if you're using the golden rule sort of idea, um, pretty much every religion has something similar to that. Yeah. Um, the United States is not founded as a Christian nation. It is not. No, at not all. as a Christian. Nation. Not anymore, for sure. <laughs> no, no, it never was. Okay. Uh, but the very I mean, foundation was, that's why when you look on the dollar bill, it says, or on the coin, it says, in God we trust. That wasn't put in until the was, 50s. Mm -hmm, but it was still put in. And in the 50s, would that because of the Red Scare with the Soviets. Mm -hmm. It was a way, because, the so because communism is considered an atheistic uh, form of government, which it isn't. The US USSR was not atheistic dictatorship, not even a communism, but the In God We Trust was not put on until 1957 or 58 as a way of trying to say, oh, we're, we're God-fearing people and we're not communists. It was not put in as a, we're definitely, you know, we're all Christians because we aren't. Like, um, the original uh, for, the original motto for the United States was e pluribus unum, from many one. Yeah, I, so in God We Trust is a very, very recent application, and it was only because we were afraid of the Soviets. And you I know kinda, what that means? E pluribus unum? Yes. From many, one. I kind of agree with what you say. Uh, no, it is not. In God We Trust is, fuck no, you if you don't believe in God, pretty much. No, it's not really. No, wait, actually, it, well, well, You know what that means? It means that me, as an atheist, and approximately 20% of the rest of the United States as non-believers, yes. have to carry around money that, in effect, says, that I believe in God. I have to use legal tender that says I, I believe you. in God. It, it's not really the God of Abraham and Isaac. Um, if you look on the back, you see Masonic uh, symbolism and all um, on the triangle. You know, are you very familiar with that? Yes. Oh. So <laughs> people know it as like the Illuminati and stuff. And like that. That well, the is, Illuminati is a complete fabrication of bullshit. Yes. Well, you know, I could agree with you, but um, this whole doctrine and stuff. But it's actually kind of not representing Christ and God, not the real God that's in the Bible. That kind of represents Satan. Well, that's, that's the that basically is just your opinion. Confuse everyone. Yeah. If you because if you say that it's not the real, that's pulling out the no true Scotsman fallacy, which means that you're using yourself as the uh, as the standard for what it is. Yeah. That would be like saying that the Westboro Baptists are not real Christians because of how hateful they are. 
because they are just just as Christian as any other one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, as you're saying. Otherwise, it's no true Scotsman. That is a logical fallacy. You know, I believe I believe that like someone that really believes in God and trusts Him, they shouldn't be given a name. We just have to have that because of our feeble minds. We need to be given something to remember. And so, what we do is just that we have our symbols and we have all this other stuff. And really, we don't we don't need a name. If we're, I would just say personally, I would say because we're we're no Seventh Day Adventists. What I would do, I would just say I believe in God, I trust Him, and I follow His word. And yeah. that comes with everything with it. Because okay. the most misconceptions you based um, you based Christianity on one person, like for and example, you, and you based was, it on the name, on the yeah. religion. And like when really know, it's not a religion, it's really it's just something that's there. Wait, you know? Christianity isn't a religion? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's not a religion. Uh, that's see, that's 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 the thing that makes people confused. You're giving it a name. And plus, it shouldn't like, be called Christianity. It's just you believe in God, and, and whether well, you believe God, in it or not, there's there are thousands. Upon thousands of human, yeah, human God. God with the capital G. And I, well, no, God is a title. It's not a name. Yes. You're talking about Yahweh. Yeah, or whatever you go by. So well, Yahweh, is the, the name Yahweh is, the, is the Abrahamic Whatever God. his real so name you also is, whatever his true name is, the Jewish the creator, the, the creator, the creator whether you believe in him or not, he's out there, okay? You can believe that there's no such thing as fish, but even if you've never seen it, nobody's ever But there's evidence for fish. Yeah. You can go yeah. and, and as there is with God. Well, there's you can't evidence. see anything. There's no evidence that is visible at all. At all? No, there isn't. Have you seen people changed when they come to Christ? Have you seen things like that? Have you heard of the flood? Well, there's no proof for the flood either. So oh, you do realize that, right? Fossilized. Why do you think there's a north and south pole? A north and south pole After is caused I... by the flood? Yeah. <laughs> you have to think. Okay, those, those are the polar caps. That's because of the way that the earth is, at the axial tilt of the earth. The mm -hmm. north and south poles don't get as much as much sunlight and as much heat. Therefore, water freezes there. And why did that happen? That's because why we're, we're 93 million flood. miles away from yes. from the sun, and we have an axial tilt. That's why the, those spots don't get as much sunlight. Well, it says in the Bible that before rain started coming from the sky, it used to come from the ground and mist. So there would be giant geysers, but they were contained. Well, the, all the geology yes. says that's completely wrong. Well, let me finish. Before that changed, okay? So when the flood I mean, happened, geology going back millions of years. Yeah. But we believe that there's no such thing as the no millions of years that happened. But anyway, based on what the Bible was saying, so when the flood came, then that's when rain started coming from the sky. That's why no one believed. They're like, oh, oh yeah, rain's gonna come from the sky, whatever. So it came from both sides, and they both the geysers burst with this extremely hot water, and the rain came down, making an extremely hot temperature, and that made changes in the earth, causing the polar caps and those to separate, you know? And of course, every yeah. single geologist in the world would say that's completely wrong, Why? and because they haven't looked at the evidence, we know that the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. Why is that? Because we have the evidence. We have the geological evidence. Plate tectonics. We can see how the... How the no, how did they test it that it's that old? They, they have, have carbon machines. dating, for yes. one. Yes, and they've also... We can also do the live animals that said that they were very, like, extremely old, like hundreds of years old when they weren't. They stated like some tree was like millions of years old. They've had like many mistakes. Yeah, science occasionally makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. The thing is though, we So how change. can you base that on something that the Bible makes, makes mistakes, but never no, changes? It doesn't. The Bible does not make yeah, mistakes. Yeah, it does. Well then are you gonna go out and kill gays? No. It says to do so. No, it doesn't say. It says yeah, it, it does. should be. It doesn't mean we're going to do that. Should be? God, this if that is that the word of God? Yes. Sir. Then that is God telling you, gays should die. The sin should die. That's saying the gates. It's the consequence of the sin. The, the, oh, look, wait, this isn't sorry. So, are you going to go up to San Francisco and sh and go no. and kill every single it's gate the in there? The, the, how do you say? It? The we're not going to be do that. We don't. We're not the judge for. But us that's people. God saying that it should that you should do so. That is God saying you should do so, and you're refusing. No, to no. To no because it says the consequence of sin is death. Well, even the so who, who, who is the who is the single most pious person that you can think of? Mother Teresa, maybe? No, that's by works. That's one of the most misconceptions about Christianity. We are justified by our Well, faith. I mean, no, no. No, here's what I'm saying. If you're saying that the consequence of sin is death, yes. but the consequence of leading the most pious life possible is also death. Because humans die. It doesn't matter how pious or how sinful you are. You will die of old age or some other malady. You could, you could, you know, you can survive. You could 
sit in a small box, completely protected from the world, being fed 